Good morning. I am Yang Hee Chol from Kiosk. I would like to thank you for inviting me to this important event. And recently, one of the most important topic is the deep sea exploration. And I, it was an honor to um, take on this topic for a presentation. And I'd like to thank the organizing committee for this. I will look into the um, exploration of deep sea from the East Sea to the Blue Ocean and the area. Before I begin, uh, what I think we need to define deep sea. There are two types of definitions. One is the geological definition, and the other is the legal definition. In terms of geological um, perspective, um, the definition of deep sea is the ocean below 200 meters of depth. And from the legal perspective, um, deep sea is defined as the seabed beyond the national jurisdiction. But the per for the purpose of this presentation, I would like to define the deep sea as the unknown deep ocean system as an a subject of scientific understanding that requires scientific research. I would like to use this geological definition. The EC is a microcosm of the open ocean and is ver a very important um, ocean. In particular, it connects to the polar Pacific and Indian Oceans. And so it goes beyond the marine resources or maritime transportation routes or environmental issues. EC connects to other regional oceans and is therefore very geographically important. On the other hand, the high sea and deep sea have a different um, nature. High seas are open for free access, but recently the international community is looking into a more efficient way to manage high seas. The deep sea is under the management of International Seabed Authority recently established for the uh, good of the common good of the mankind. For all these seas, how much do we know? And what direction should Korea take? I think it is high time for us to think about the way forward. So let's look at the geographical area of the EC. In city IHO uh, or LME that uh, secure the definition defines the um, EC have a different view. But the geographical area um, of EC is not very different. The entire coastline is 1,700 kilometers from north to south. The area is about 1.007, 300 square kilometers. The deepest depth is nearly 3,000 meters. And um, compared to what we know of the EC, there is so much more a deeper ocean that we do not know yet. And there have been some historical views. Uh, this um, chart of the EC is from Russia. Uh, however, uh, EC was seen by the West, whether it was seen as a military base or a colony or a regional sea control area or uh, area to secure marine resources. There have been many different approaches. And the uh, Western uh, scholars had a similar perspective. The main point is that from the past to present, EC was always considered to be important, and it is a very important pillar that connects to other regional oceans. There are many countries um, conducting research on the EC. According to our analysis, the country that most actively researches the EC is Russia, Japan, and Korea that borders the EC. Japan's um, research into the EC is uh, much more active than that of Russia or Korea, but um, the perspective of these three countries towards EC is based on competition and very uh, remains on the surface area and quite uh, superficial rather than understanding the entire EC area and what impact EC has on each country. A comprehensive scientific research is not yet being done on the EC. 
In the past, we had a similar view towards EC uh, with the main focus on Dokdo territorial sovereignty issue and then EC naming issue. But recently, regarding the EC, uh, the coastal states have a shift in their paradigm. In particular, there is the IHO switch from the name notation to number display on the EC, which was a decision made in 2020. They are digitalizing uh, the naming notation. Currently, S130 is a new project that they are running. If all the C name of the Cs are indicated in this way, then EC Dokdo issue that we have seen so far, uh, rather than being led by a particular coastal can could be uh, led by a coastal state. The international law has a similar view of the EC. EC is a semi-enclosed or an enclosed sea area surrounded by two or more states. Seas such as this require collaboration and cooperation under the duties of international law. There have been many different attempts. Information held by different states are being shared through uh, scholars or through the diplomatic channels um, to pursue common survival. And the scope of such research is shifting from a foothold area to understanding the entire EC. In the EC, uh, if the EC research is driven by the entire um, area rather than a particular coastal state, then of course um, the framework would still pursue the specific interest, national interests of relevant countries, but I think that the future direction of this uh, looking at EC would be much more at a wider scope of how to address climate change and fishery resources in a way that the relevant countries must share information. I think the gradual wall change will take place. EC is geopolitically also very important. Internationally, there are many different straits across the world, uh, 40 of them located in the Northeast Asia. And in EC, there is the Korea state, Sugaru state, which are uh, military, militarily, logistically, strategically very important. So they are in the north and south part of the EC. Korea is very reliant on Russia, oh, the OSHA, and so are um, Japan and Russia. So when we look at the EC, we need to understand the entire sea rather than um, taking a narrow scope and perspective as we did in the past. From a slightly different um, angle, Let's look at the uh, deep sea area from an unclose perspective to the deep sea or the high seas. When UNCLOS was adopted in 1980, uh, the deep sea issues became more complicated. There is the coastal waters, but there are also the high seas or deep sea where no particular country has jurisdiction over. For the areas outside the 200 uh, nautical miles, uh, that is called the deep or oh, high seas. And then uh, the land part of that is called the outer, lim outer continental shelf and the deep sea area. Deep sea area is governed by the ISA. And all the benefits and from resources from the deep sea has to be returned to the human uh, community under a joint governing system. This is one of the strongest uh, points of UNCLOS. But despite this regulation in UNCLOS, still many countries have not yet concluded the delimitation of their outer continental shell where they have jurisdiction. This means that the deep sea area to be um, governed by the ISA still remains undetermined, but still 231 billion uh, square meters of deep seabed or high seas have great potential for resource development and more. According to agreements, if all the countries were to claim jurisdiction, the ones in gray areas are EECs, but if 
there are countries that want to extend that to beyond 200 nautical miles, and in that case, the yellow areas will belong to a certain jurisdiction of particular countries. But still, the blue remains as the deep sea area. And this indicates an uncharted area for the mankind where we do not have it, any knowledge of. According to the international um, conventions, these are the sea, deep sea or high sea area that we can approach. First, there is the high seas. High seas remain open. Um, any countries can conduct uh, marine scientific research and any waters or marine resources from that area can be a subject of research under the current framework. But for all marine resources, for all the waters, um, there is the new regime, international regime under development called the BBNJ, uh, which is taking place under the framework of UNCLOS. It is a can be can present a new way of using marine resources, and the deep sea bed has really focused on resource exploration, but is gradually shifting to exploitation. Exploitation rules are in place, and until 2023, the rules will be finalized. The way we used marine resources and the area uh, can now um, be governed by a new framework. What about the polar sea? In the case of the Arctic, uh, it seems far away, but the polar sea is still has some high sea areas beyond the EEZs, and even if the uh, jurisdiction is extended by coastal states, uh, still there can be a wide area that remains in the area. So the deep sea, um, although not yet approached, may have a much wider framework and a scope. And so research into the deep sea requires a shift in perspective towards the sea itself that we have held so far. And we need a much multidimensional uh, perspective. For a long period of time, Korea has conducted deep sea research of course, the purpose was to secure mineral resources, as with all other nations, um, rather than understanding the ocean itself, how to secure particular mineral resources was the focus. However, the approach we took is gradually changing. Now, we look at the open ocean factors that may impact the Korean uh, peninsula, the high seas, um, interworkings, and the uh, ocean. But of course, uh, whether it's marine resources, life resources, biological resources, uh, the research is still geared towards particular resources. But how to use those resources uh, is more about how to share with the international community and how to contribute to the world. So in at first, we were a latecomer, but now uh, the research outcomes are not very pessimistic. Um, we have reached a level where we can cooperate with the international community, but of course, there is more to be done. The interpretation of the ocean by the world, how to design, how to paint a picture of the ocean is really a big challenge, not only for Korea, but the world. Let me share with you two examples. The one on the right is the U.S. map of information on their ocean. Despite the exploration, only 53% uh, of 53% remain unmapped. What about the international efforts, IHO, ISA, and the GEPCO's Seabed 2030 project is mapping the global ocean until this year, only 24% have been mapped for all the ocean. Our knowledge, the world's knowledge, is still very much limited. Many countries are developing technology and gradually um, making their way into the ocean. Let's look at our neighboring countries. In the case of China, they have 4,500 meter and 7,000 10,100-meter um, submarine vehicle, 
they have a significant level of operating know-how. Japan has Sinkai 6500 until next year. 12,000 meter class of HOV will be developed by Japan. Since the 17th century, the world has always debated two points, whether to use the ocean freely or to control the ocean. This led to the governance of UNCLOS. But the ocean that UNCLOS sees today, or the international norms sees today, and the direction that the international community should take is not freedom or control, but a joint management and a joint sharing of benefits. Deep sea exploration, I think, is the first step towards that direction going from unknown ocean to understood and known ocean under joint management. Building that framework would apply to the EC and the EC deep sea area it is as a common principle. Although EC remains unknown, deep sea exploration and research, it should be done not only by competition, but under a joint cooperation through a shift in direction as a dual starting point. Thank you very much.